An accused cop killer is charged. Cherokee Nation takes opioid companies to court. And the list of declared gubernatorial candidates just got longer. This is OU Nightly. Logan County prosecutors have filed first-degree murder charges against the man accused of killing a Logan County deputy. Now, Nathan Aaron LaForce is accused of shooting and killing David Wade. You're looking at the deputy's body cam video showing LaForce pulling a gun from his waist and ultimately pointing it at Wade. After this, LaForce allegedly opened fire, mortally wounding the deputy, and then fled the scene in Wade's pickup. Officers later found LaForce hiding in an outbuilding on the property in the area. David Wade was pronounced dead at OU Medical Center. Now the Cherokee Nation is suing wholesalers and retailers for opioid medications. The lawsuit filed today alleges that companies haven't done enough to prevent tribal members from acquiring illegally prescribed opioids. They also say the company has created conditions where these powerful painkillers can flow freely from abusers to drug dealers. They are seeking restitution for health care costs acquired from treating opioid addicted citizens. Lawmakers are putting the brakes on an income tax cut. A bill was approved that would repeal the next automated cut that could trigger a state revenues improve. The last tax cut took effect in 2016 and was triggered by a prediction that the state's revenue would grow more than the immediate cost of the cut. The author of the bill, State Representative Earl Sears, says that without his bill, it is likely that the cut could be triggered later in the year. And big changes are coming to the academic advising process here at OU, and improvements are underway. After an inquiry, OU Nightly into advising garnered a great deal of negative attention. OU Advising reached out to each of the students that complained on this post. Um, she reached out to me and was like, hey, like I saw that you had posted this. I would love to meet with you and kind of talk about like the issues that you've had and sort of what's gone on with your academic advising and see if I can help you in any way. If something isn't right, if they don't get the advice they want, if they think something's wrong you know they can seek out another opinion they can question things they um, like we want them to be partners in the advising process OU advising is looking to make improvements requesting a training boot camp to standardize advisors training across the board along with more advising faculty the change the students to advisor ratio and more all of these requests have been sent to the academic provost and the Office of Academic Advising urges students with negative advising experiences to meet with their departments and make these issues known. An economist from the University of Oklahoma says the state of Oklahoma is not producing the college educated workforce necessary to be competitive. Oklahoma, when compared to bordering states and the nation, ranks near the bottom when it comes to the percentage of adults who have an associate degree or higher. Since 1992, for workers with a high school diploma or less, jobs have decreased, but employment for people with an associate degree or higher has increased from 34.8 million to 67 million workers. Now, Governor Mary Fallon joined Kodak today in Weatherford as they announced the company will be adding new jobs to the area. Kodak has a facility in Weatherford and was chosen to accommodate the new Flexo plate line expansion. This is a $15 million investment, the largest investment since 2000. Now, JC, I tried to bring some flavor of spring to the studio today, <laughs> but of course it's raining outside now, so that's just my luck. Right, and I hear that we're actually supposed to get a lot more. Mm -hmm. Jordan, can you tell us more? That's right, we have a flood watch that was issued yesterday for Norman, and they've just extended it this afternoon to also include a lot in the metro area. So now we have most of the metro areas in I-44 corridor, now under a flood watch, that's until tonight, until Friday evening tomorrow around 10 o'clock. And the reason for that, we're going to see a lot of rain that's coming up in a bit. But right now, temperatures started to warm up, and then we had the showers and the clouds move in, and the temperatures have stopped. We're sitting right at 70 degrees, whereas we're sitting at 78 and 79 in southern Oklahoma. As thanks to this cold front, as you can see, starting to move to the south. That's going to be the focus for some storms coming up for tonight. We have an active Friday ahead, lots of storms, and maybe some severe weather. We're going to talk about all about that coming up in Maine weather. But for now, back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Jordan. Now, Representative Mark Wayne Mullen is still not sure whether he will run for re-election, but has filed a declaration of candidacy just in case. Mullen's campaign filed the paperwork on March 2nd after being notified that they must stop further fundraising or create a 2018 committee. In 2012, Mullen stated he would only serve three terms, but admits he underestimated the time it would take to accomplish his goals. The list of people who believe pr Trump should release his tax returns keeps growing. This time, Oklahoma Senator James Lankford is speaking out. 
saying that the president should release his tax returns because he said he would during his campaign. Most recently, the White House claimed he was still under audit, but the IRS stated that being under audit does not prevent him from making his records public. And we're following breaking international news this afternoon from Paris. Kyle Payne joins us now in the News Center. Kyle. L late today, a man believed to be a terrorist shot and killed a Paris police officer on the Champs-Élysées. A man emerged from his car with an automatic weapon and fired at a police vehicle. The police returned fire and killed the attacker. Investigators shut down the historic avenue, now lined with security vehicles. And investigators in Northern California have found a Tennessee teacher accused of kidnapping one of his students. Police safely recovered 15-year-old Elizabeth Thomas. Her teacher, Tad Cummins, along with Thomas, went missing on March 13th when an Amber Alert was issued. The two were spotted in OKC two weeks ago. And Republicans believe they're edging closer to repealing the Affordable Care Act. And we're going to take that important first step to repeal and replace Obamacare with the kind of health care reform that President Trump has envisioned. Okay. President Trump threatened to kill a program in the ACA that pays health insurers to offer lower deductibles in an attempt to get the Democratic Party to negotiate changes in the 2010 law. And Colin and JC, President Trump received Politico's report card on his first 100 days. 16% gave him an A, and nearly a quarter of the voters gave him an F. Wow, well, thank you, Kyle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you are about to look at a live shot of the focus of our next story. That right there is Mr. Right, Ken ready? Fisher himself, the faculty advisor for OU Nightly, in our control room right now monitoring this, this newscast. Scary. But Ken Fisher is much more than a faculty advisor for Nightly and Sooner Sports Pad. Since 2006, Ken's been teaching journalism classes at OU's Gaylord College and other schools before that. Nearly all of the student journalists you see here on Nightly started in Ken's class. Now, we all know him as a die-hard baseball fan with an amazing grasp of the history of the game and for his undying loyalty and respect for Brett Maverick, a.k.a. Norman's favorite son, James Garner. But the reason we're bringing all this up today is because Sven Ken Fisher is the winner of the Edward L. Bliss Award for Distinguished Broadcast Journalism Education. It's one of the highest honors in journalism education in the world. And it's no surprise to any of the hundreds of students and colleagues whose life he has touched. We all know Ken Fisher is truly a winner. And I know I truly appreciated him as well. Yes, thank you, Ken. So still ahead on OU Nightly, David Bourne is back and ready to get to work. Plus, college could soon be within the reach of more young people in Oklahoma. Stay with us. President David Bourne is back to work this week after heart bypass surgery. He sat down with OU Nightly and told us he's committed to getting back to work to ensure students on campus feel safe and welcome. This has been an especially tough year for our international students and the rumors that they might no longer be allowed to come to this country from some of those, for example, of Hispanic background who spent their whole lives in this country and become great Americans and they should be able to continue to stay here, not be sent back to the countries where they perhaps originated. Some of them came here as young children. ...is easing his way back to a full-time schedule, but that doesn't mean he's relaxing. He's saying while at home he's been lobbying legislature by phone to try and persuade them to increase spending for higher education. Now, despite Oklahoma's budget deficit, more students could actually be earning college scholarships this year. Emily Akins is here with the Governor Report to tell us how. Yeah, that's right, Colin. 1,000 more students could be earning college degrees thanks to a change being made to Oklahoma's promise. Bill 529 is a proposal to raise the annual income limit to $10,000 over the next three years. Currently, Oklahoma's promise requires that parents earn less than $50,000 a year for students to receive a college tuition scholarship. And in a late night session, the Oklahoma House yesterday rejected a bill that would update HIV and AIDS prevention, education in public schools. The measure would have also required that classroom curriculum include people who engage in high risk behavior get tested and use high prevention methods like condoms. It also would have deleted a state law that says avoiding homosexuality IV drug use is the only method of preventing HIV and AIDS. The House killed Bill 1538 by a vote of 47 to 41. 
And the race is on for state governor. Democratic House Minority Leader Scott Inman announced today that he will run for governor in 2018. He made a video announcement on social media saying our previous state leaders have failed us. After serving the state for six years, his platform is to rebuild Oklahoma. Inman has been a frequent critic of income tax cuts, but says he supports reinvesting in state services like schools, highways, and health care. Governor Mary Fallon cannot run again because of term limits. And guys, talking about the state governor race and Mary Fallon, a nationwide poll released by Morning Consult today showed that she was ranked among the five worst governors in the U.S. Wow, that's actually... I mean, everyone in that uh, profession always gets some slack at some point. Yeah, so. you're right, Colin. It's you're hard right. not to get the negative and positive like Right. <laughs> well, thank you, Emily. Thanks, guys. Still head on OU Nightly. Jordan has a look at some stormy weather headed right for us. Weather next. Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Drew Nevich. to look at your weather. So we have a live look outside right now, and we can see the clouds have increased. It is a little windy. Right now we're sitting at 70 degrees, which is where we kind of topped off earlier today once the cold front moved through and brought us northeast winds. Our dew point is still sitting at 59, so it still is muggy outside for most of the area. But taking a look at our radar, we have changes coming on the way. So here we go. Right now, we do have a few showers and storms that are moving through the region right now. So here they are in eastern Oklahoma, and this is all part of a cold front. And what that's going to do is that's going to stall out overnight tonight, and it's going to set the stage for a chance for severe weather tomorrow. That's what's going to happen is that front stalls out. It comes back to the north as a warm front, and so it comes back to the warm front as a warm front, and then behind it, warm, moist air coming into the surface. At the same time, above our heads, up inside the atmosphere, the jet stream will be over us. And so when you combine those two, you have the chance for severe weather and a lot of storms. And that is the case for tomorrow. So let's play this out. When we get to tonight, right now, we have clear skies, basically. We'll have not very much rain, but that's going to increase as we go through the evening tonight. So the rain and the showers and the thunderstorms start to increase. By the time we get to midnight, widespread showers and storms all across the state. Again, that boundary is sitting about right there. And so all the storms will develop just to the northwest of it overnight tonight. And these are mainly looking at a lot of rain and maybe some small hail with these storms. Now that continues for most of the night tonight overnight. Then when we get to Friday tomorrow morning, you can see the rain continues. And there's up front the boundary that we keep talking about. It's the main setup for storms. But watch what happens to the south of the boundary as I animate this out. Watch right there. That right there is a supercell. And that's what it would be, a supercell. And that is the main threat for severe weather. So for us here in Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Norman, we have a chance for severe weather, but it's pretty low. It's mainly basically a slight chance. The best chance is going to be down to our south, to the south of the warm front. And so we're looking at how much rain. That's the biggest issue. Look at this, one inch, two inch, even topping off near four and a half inches in some places locally, higher amounts. So the biggest concern is flooding. That's what I'm most concerned about is the flooding. Then there is that hail threat. Then we have the wind threat. The tornado threat, again, is very, very low. It's not that big of a deal for us here in Norman. Then we send the forecast out. There's a chance for rain. Tapers off on Saturday, though. And then once we get to the beginning of the week, we start to warm up. We get to 74 degrees on Monday. And by the time we get to the end of the week, we're inside the 80s. Where there's some indications that we may actually hit 90 by the time we get to Thursday of next week. Wow, so rain boots tomorrow and shorts next week. <laughs> exactly, rain boots and then shorts. <laughs> Wow, Typical April degrees. in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need that warm weather for sure. That's true. That's true. And Saturday, around 60 degrees. So mm. it will be cool on Saturday. So make sure you're ready for that on Saturday. Oh, well, thank you, Jordan. Thank you. Coming up on OU Nightly, Holden Cruzmark is here to give us an update on Tiger Woods' health. And he will also have highlights of the Thunder's battle with the Rockets down in Houston. Last night, it was game two of the showdown between the two MVP candidates, Russell Westbrook's Thunder and James Harden's Rockets. The Beard and Shooters dominated game one start to finish, taking a 1-0 lead in the series, but the Thunder were determined to steal a game in Houston. Russ and Co. came out in this game with a vengeance early on. Jumping out to a 28-13 lead in the first quarter, Westbrook had a monster game ending the night with 51 points, 13 assists, and 10 boards, but number zero faltered down the stretch in the fourth quarter, shooting just four for 18 as the Rockets overcome a double digit deficit to win 115-111. Despite Westbrook taking the bulk of the shots in the fourth, he said he still trusts his teammates to make shots. Uh, I trusted my teammates all the time. So, um, you know, regardless of what's going on, I always trusted my guys. Um, and they trusted me to make plays. Um, and, you know, that's what we've been doing since 
when I start of the season, I'm always going to do that. The Thunder and Rockets weren't the only playoff action going on last night. Former Thunder coach Scott Brooks and his Wizards played in game two against the Hawks, and it was a close one throughout. But in the fourth quarter, John Wall and Bradley Beal took over, scoring 20 of the Wizards last 21. Washington wins game two 109-101 to take a 2-0 series lead. The Warriors and Blazers were also in action, but this one wasn't nearly as close. Despite being without Kevin Durant, the Warriors were able to dominate behind a balanced scoring attack. Golden State cruises to a 110-81 victory and a 2-0 series lead. For Tiger Woods fans hoping to see him back on the links soon, you'll have to wait a little while longer. It was just announced today Woods has undergone his fourth back surgery since 2014, this time in hopes to relieve pain in his back and leg. Woods last competed professionally in the Dubai Desert Classic, where he was forced to withdraw after the first round due to back spasms. It was less than a week ago the women, Oklahoma Sooners women's gymnastics team won its third national championship. Even though it's only been a week, senior Chase Caps reminisced on her time in the program. Um, honestly, just, just enjoy every single moment. It flies by like no other. I thought I moved in yesterday, but I've been told otherwise. So um, I've got so many memories that I just I cherish and I will remember forever. And I just want these girls to enjoy every single second and don't take one second for granted because it'll be over in a flash. With women's gym having already boasted their title, the top ranked men's gymnastics team looks to do the same this weekend. The team is up in West Point and will be competing in one of the two six team qualifiers tomorrow evening. The top three teams from each qualifier will advance to the finals on Saturday. And one of the funniest videos you'll see all day. The Vanderbilt football team has decided to take a new approach to recruiting this year taking some pointers from the sororities around campus. The team decided to make its own version of a sorority recruitment video, complete with a game of patty cake and some falling human pyramids. Now guys, maybe Vanderbilt should stick more to football. They went three and five in the SEC this past year. Now I'm, uh, I'm not here to judge, but in Greek life terms, Vanderbilt is basically the bottom house in the SEC, so you should probably hit the practice field one more time. Right, but considering all the videos I've seen, there is among the top. <laughs> Thank you very much, Holden. Well, still to come on OU Nightly, an OU student is helping women in need. And uh, we'll have Today in History for you coming up next. Stay with us. I'm Amina Schweitzer at the OU Nightly Update Desk with the latest on the shooting at the Champs-Élysées in Paris. Minutes ago, it was released that the suspect in the shooting was previously known to French security officials as the subject of surveillance for radical Islamist activities. Officials now believe in all likelihood the attack was a terrorist act and that there was only one shooter. Additionally, two French presidential candidates, Marine Le Pen and Francois Fillon, have tweeted their support for the French police. That's all for now. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Amina. Feminine hygiene products can make people feel a little uncomfortable. Kylie Capps shows us an OU student who isn't afraid to ask for help and state her opinion. Over the course of a year, a typical woman could spend between $150 and $300 on feminine hygiene products. OU student Joy Douglas has created an initiative in hopes to help women who are in need. No woman can go without having pads and tampons. Like It's not healthy and it's not hygienic. Kitty Cat Collective is a new donation-based organization to provide women with the products they need. And like, it's not, I don't need money, anything, anything like that. Just bring items, bring product, and like try and give to the organization so that it can grow and we can give back to the community. Because it's not even about like us, me, the school. It's about the people that need this stuff because nobody else is looking out for them. Kitty Cat Collective is in need of pads, panty liners, tampons, shampoo, conditioner, and deodorant. I think it's really important. I think feminine hygiene products, obviously, all girls need them and it's really important and if there's people willing to provide that and help with that then I think that's really awesome. Seven pink donation boxes are scattered around campus. Locations such as Wagner Hall and Student Life are sporting the little pink boxes. I want to take it like as far across Oklahoma as I can and put it in as many places as possible because I feel like sometimes because we're in America we don't realize that there are people that still go without and there are people that still need things. First OU, next up, the world. Kylie Caps, OU Nightly.
Joy hopes to expand her initiative into an actual OU-based organization, which will happen in no time. A good cause for sure. Jordan, one more look at the forecast. Yeah, that's right. We have the chance for storms coming in for tonight and then into tomorrow. And then it'll clear out cooler on Saturday, though, and then we dry out for the rest of next week. Well, thank All you, right. Jordan. Thanks. And thank you for watching OU Nightly, brought to you by the Gaylord College of Journalism and Mass Communication on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. Thanks for watching.